wagon's busy, the flapjacks in play. The herd is astir over hillside and vale, with the night riders round and the mob to the trail. Come take up your cinches and shake out your reins. Come wake your old bronco and break for the plains. Come roust out your steers from the long chaparral, for the outfit is off to the railroad corral. Hi, I'm Peter Campbell. Today we have a ranch roping tape for you, uh, beginner to intermediate. Uh, maybe I'll start by talking about the rope that I'm going to use right now, and there's some different ropes that you can use, and uh, we'll get into that a little bit later on. This is a 5 16 nylon, 60 feet, with a rawhide hondo. Um, this is what I like to use. Um, if it was real wet, uh, I'd use a poly rope. You know, if it was wet out, the ground was wet or whatever. Now maybe we'll start off with building a loop. The way There's various different ways to build a loop. One way I like to uh, build a loop is to take the loop in your right hand like this, roll it back over your thumb. You see now how it's hooked on my thumb? Bring it back all the way up to the coils. Change hands, hold the hondu with your left hand. Pull your right hand out. Take a hold of the hondu again. Roll it back. Bring it back up, hold on to it with your left hand here, pull your right hand out, hang on to it, roll it back, build it up. First thing we need to kind of get sorted out is we're going to go over uh, the forward swings. Um, there's three forward swings uh, and there's a fourth one and we'll get into that later when we're a horseback. Um, the first forward swing I'd like to kind of uh, get you started with is a sidearm swing. Now this isn't like uh, uh, so much like calf roping and that this ranch roping style of roping uh, uses more arm and shoulder um, so remember that. Um, maybe I'll visit about the loop a little bit first here. From my left hand to my right hand this is what I call the spoke. From here to the hondu is the spoke. From wherever the hondu is in the rope, from here up is the base of the loop. From here down is the tip. This is so that you can, uh, when I refer to the loop like that, you can understand what I'm talking about. I don't like the spoke to be any more than a, a third of the size of the loop, but I don't like it a quarter. If it was a quarter, it would be like this. That's not enough. It throws the rope out of balance. If it was like that, it'd be more than a third. That'd be more like three quarters. It's too much. About a third of the loop. Not a half, but a little bit less than a half. This usually keeps the rope pretty balanced. Of course, that would change depending on the rope and stuff that you're using. The bigger the loop, the more spoke you would have because the loop would get bigger. The first swing I'm going to show you is a sidearm swing. It's at 45 degrees. Lots of arm and shoulder in this loop. You want to make sure when you're practicing on the ground that you pretend like you're on your horse. We're not going to do lots on the ground because I feel like that if you do lots of practicing on the ground, as long as you can swing your rope and have a little bit of control with it, that's good. Um, you should get both good at both on the ground and a horseback. Um, but I feel like once you get a horseback, it changes the position and the angles of the way you pitch the loop. So I would prefer that you practice the horseback. Okay, now we're going to show you the sidearm swing. This is one of the swings. Uh, three of the swing forward swings. This is a sidearm swing. My hand changes flat in front of me. That's an overhand swing. The other shot is an overhand with the tip down over your left shoulder. These are the three swings. You need to get good at swinging all these different swings in different positions. You should be able to change from a sidearm to an overhand to an overhand with the tip over the left shoulder. Back to a sidearm. You should get good at swinging all three of those different swings. 
There's another forward swing we'll get into later when we get a horseback, and there's uh, a shot called the hula hand and a backhand shot. We'll get into uh, doing that on the ground, uh, a horseback also. I'm going to show you a sidearm swing head cap, and the cattle would be going from left to right here. Um, you could either be standing still or you could be uh, walking toward the cattle. You should get this shot to be like breathing and get real, real handy at this shot. These ranch style shots use lots of arm and shoulder. Practice like you were riding your horse. Your reins and that are out in front of you. You wouldn't have it back, the coils back behind your back, kind of out in front of you like you were riding. When you pitch this shot, look right at his head. It should figure eight on the offside so as to cause the cattle not to run through the loop. You would take your slack and go to the horn. That's one shot I'd like you to get real good at. These are two shots that I feel are kind of the easiest shots for people to learn. The other shot I'd like to show you is a sidearm flank shot. Do not pitch it till your knee gets to the calf's tail. When you come in here, pitch the shot, roll your horse's hindquarters around, pick up straight on the rope, and you'd have two hind feet. I'd like you to get good at that shot. That's a real pretty shot, and I kind of feel like that's kind of the easiest shot for people to get the hang of. One caution I might kind of mention there, uh, and we'll talk about the angles. When I say it's a sidearm swing 45 degrees, the reason on the heel shot it's 45 degrees is this angle from here to here. Your rope has to be a little bit less than this angle. It needs to be from here to about here. If your loop is flatter, it'll hit a front leg. So remember that, roping is all angles, and you need to get to evaluating the angles of the shots. I'll pitch that sidearm flank shot again, and I will hit a front leg this time to show you what would happen if the loop was flatter. If it was too flat, the loop, you watch what happens. See it hit a front leg? It needs to be steeper, more of an angle, like I visited about there earlier. So remember that angle. You won't use too big of a loop here when you're on the ground. It's a sidearm swing. Go slow and pitch that loop down like that. Okay, very good. I might mention kind of how we'd coil up our rope. I'll kind of pitch some rope out there. There's two ways to coil it. With your thumb up is the way I like to practice coiling. You roll your wrist and put the coil back in your left hand. The reason I like to practice like this is because it's like when you go to dally. You should learn both ways. I'll show you the other way. But this way here, you're ready to dally when you do go to dally. Your thumb is up. If your thumb was down like this, you would get that hung up in the horn and lose a thumb. The other way to do that is to turn your thumb down and coil up like this. Okay, those are the kind of two ways to uh, coil up the rope. I've showed you two shots on the ground. I want you to remember that all these shots that I'm going to show you can be done from the ground or a horseback, either with a breakaway hondo or with a normal hondo. So I want you to practice a horseback as much as you can. So I'm going to get a horseback and then we're going to go through all the head and heel shots and uh, we'll visit about the angles and the different positions and how the cattle would be traveling and we'll see how things uh, shape up. The first shot I want to show you is a sidearm head shot, and that's the one we did on the ground there. I might mention uh, it's 
Some of you might be riding with a Snaffle Bit and a McCarty, um, or some might be riding with bridle reins. I like that you can either hold the bridle reins like this and the coils in your left hand, or I fold the bridle reins in half like this and hold it like this when I rope. When you're making your loop, uh, we'll visit about the other ways to make a loop. The way I showed you on the ground is to roll this, bring it up, take your hand out, roll it back. The back part of the loop hits the calf of your leg, not your horse's flank. The other way, I'm going to show you when we get started right now, uh, that you can build a loop is you hook it with your thumb here and feed a bunch of slack in it. Then pass the hondo around to get the kinks out of it, like this. Now you've built a loop, you see? See how that works? Okay. Okay. Now, the shot I'm going to show you here is one of the shots of the forward swing. Remember, when you get a horse back, you should be able to get your horse and you should be able to swing the rope. A sidearm swing here an overhand swing standing up in the stirrups and a tip over the left shoulder swing. You should be able to do all three of those without hitting your horse in the head. If you are or you're uh, bumping on your horse with the rope, practice this until it gets like breathing for you. Okay? Okay, the first shot I want to show you is a sidearm head catch here. The cattle would be going from left to right. When you pitch that shot, I look right at the cattle's head. When I pitch that shot, it goes out there and it should come back on the left side of the cow so as the cow's not to run through the loop. When you are practicing here a horseback, if at any time you get into trouble or a problem, drop the coils. I'm not going to let go of this part, I want to pick it back up. Drop the coils, you can always get your rope back or uh, whatever, so these things are important. At any time, if you have that get in a bind or in a witch's tail, which I call a witch's tail, drop the coils. Okay. This shot here is a facing up shot. If the cattle were facing up, I'm not worried about roping something that's facing up to me. It's a sidearm swing. Make sure you use lots of arm and shoulder when you're roping. When you pitch that rope, it should lay right on top of the critter's back. Now, you don't take your slack now. You wait, you ride here like this when the cattle turns, or you ride past the cattle, you take your slack like this, okay? The next shot I'm going to show you is a sidearm flank shot. This is the one that we did on the ground. You want to make sure when you're a horseback practicing this shot that you're not in too close. You do not pitch the loop until it gets to your knee. The reason you don't pitch it until the critter's tail gets to your knee, if you pitch it before, the loop could come around there and pick up your horse's front legs, and that can be real dangerous. So you want to make sure you stay out away from it. This is a sidearm swing, about 45 degrees. Start your horse coming across the pen, go real slow, try to get the timing of the swing and where the cattle is. Lay that rope down here, 
roll your horse's hindquarters around, lift straight up on the rope, and now you have two feet. Okay? The next shot that I'm going to do is a, a sidearm swing hip shot and the cattle will be going from left to right across the corral. The reason I like the hip shots is a lot of times out in the open conventional heel traps won't take because of tall grass. If you're riding a young horse they won't hold up there long enough for you to get into position, get your coils coiled up and get to the horn. This gives you lots of time to arrange everything and in tall grass it'll stand up there and it'll take just about all the time. At the start you might not think that it looks like anything there because the critter actually has to walk through the loop so when you're on the dummy here you just kind of get it to lay there like it would if that was a, a cow. On this shot here it's a sidearm swing of 45 degrees. You push your hand palm of your hand across the top of his hind quarters. I do not look at the feet. I look at his hind quarters. I push my hand across the top of his hind quarters and then I roll my thumb down. The base of the loop should go on top of the hind quarters. The tip will go underneath. You do not worry about the tip going underneath. As long as the base goes over and the loop folds in half, the tip will take care of itself. Remember the angle on these, it's about 45 degrees. It's the same angle from the hind feet to the bottom of the front leg. When you're practicing, you don't have to be 20, 30, 40 feet away. Kind of get in reasonable, but not too close. You don't want the loop to hit the critter. Now I'm going to swing at a 45 degree sidearm swing. I'm going to push my hand across the top of his hind quarters like that. He will walk forward and you will take two hind feet. Okay, now we're going to go to the other swing, which is the overhand swing, which is the one that's flat in front of you. You stand up in your stirrups, you see. We just did the sidearm swing. Here we're going to put all three swings together. Sidearm swing. Now we're going to do an overhand swing. Stand up in your stirrups. Here, this is a, uh, what they mostly do in, the, in arena roping. Here the tip is down it would be the same angle as the cow's face. If your loop was flatter, it may miss the head completely. If it was a little bit of an angle, it may just catch the horns. Here it has to be the same angle as the cow's face in order for it to go around. Start your swing. Stand up in your stirrups. When you pitch this loop, I look right between his ears, tip down, you're a little bit to the left of the critter. Pitch that shot. It should figure eight back to you so as the cattle's not to run through the loop. You take your slack straight back like this and then you would go to the horn. This is another overhand swing, facing up shot. If the cattle were facing up, again, we, we did one with a sidearm swing. This one here is a facing up shot. Again, I'm not worried about roping something straight on. You don't want to get in too close when you do this shot. Straight on, stand up in your stirrups, pitch that loop on like that. Again, wait, ride to the critter, do not pull the slack until you get to the side here or the critter turns to his left. Take your slack, 
and go to the horn. Okay, this is a, a straight behind hip shot. This is a very, very difficult shot. What you do is when you're straight in behind, you roll your hand hard counterclockwise. The base of the loop should go on top of the hindquarters and the tip underneath. You may tip your horse's nose a little bit to the left. That might help you. Stand up in your stirrups. When you pitch it, you roll your hand hard counterclockwise when it leaves your hand. He will walk forward and you will get to wait for him to step in the loop and you will get two hind feet. Okay? Very good. There's no angle to that shot. It's straight across. It's flat in front of you and you roll your hand hard counterclockwise. Okay, we've done two swings. We've done a sidearm swing. We've done an overhand swing with the tip down in front. Now we're going to visit about the other swing with the tip down over your left shoulder. This shot is good for figure eighting the front feet or when cattle are going from right to left. This is a good shot. It's the only way you can catch them like that. When you start that swing, we'll just ask Dixie can back up a little there. Stand up in your stirrups. Tip the tip down here over your left shoulder. You should be, this shot has a range of, uh, you're about 45 degrees from the cattle. Tip it down over your left shoulder like this. Pitch the shot. It should figure eight back to you like that, and you'll take your slack. This is also an overhand shot with the tip over your left shoulder. This is typically what you would see in the roping arena if they were team roping. Um, this is sometimes pretty difficult for most people to get because of the angle. I know that it was difficult for me to get. I had better luck getting the hip shots to take than I do uh, when I was learning getting this shot to take. The thing you want to remember on this shot is the tips down over your left shoulder, you'd be standing up. You'd be about two feet, three feet away from the critter to the, on the left side of the critter. You don't release your rope until it touches the right hind leg. It's a trap shot. They can either be moving or standing still for this shot. Start your swing. Again, you don't want to get too far away when you're learning. Kind of stay in close like this. Stand up in your stirrups like this. I look at the right hind leg. Tip the tip down over your left shoulder. That is because of the angle. If you notice the angle from his hind leg to the bottom of his front leg is the same as the rope there. Swing that, get in time. The step, pitch that loop down, it should lay down there. If you notice on this soft rope, they don't stand up very well. That's why I like the hip shots. If you were in closer, you would hold the loop up a little bit. I'll pitch it once more for you so you can see that. If you were in closer a little bit and you were going to heel it like that, you could hold the spoke of your loop up and it will keep the loop up. 
like that. The bottom rope has to go on the ground. If it doesn't, you're liable only pick to pick up one hind leg. That loop has to lay on the ground. But if you were to hold your spoke up like that, that would keep the loop up a little bit until he walked in it. You wait for him to walk forward, put both feet in the rope, up when the rope comes tight, you dally. Okay? This is a overhand shot with the tip over your left shoulder. This would be if the cattle were going from right to left or somebody had it headed and it was windmilling away from you. This shot is very effective. If maybe your horse was scared of cattle, um, it was a green colt and you couldn't get right up close to it. Stand up in your stirrups. Tip the loop down over your left shoulder. As the base of the loop touches the hind quarters, I'll nip the spoke and that will bring the tip back to me. Okay, we have done the sidearm swing, which is the one swing. We did the head shots and heel shots that went with that. We did the overhand swing, standing up in your stirrups. We did the tip over your left shoulder overhand swing. We did those shots. I mentioned earlier that there was one other swing that went with this, and this is called a scoop loop. It's really a left-handed roper's shot thrown right-handed. The cattle would be going from your right to your left. Um, what happens is the loop is in at my foot and out at my head. When I pitch the shot, I roll my hand between his ears. This is a very difficult shot and it's very hard to throw from the ground. I'll kind of show you the angle of it. This would be a sidearm swing right here. This is what the scoop loop looks like. It's in at my foot and out at my head. In at my foot and out at my head. You see? When you pitch that shot, it should figure eight on the off side of the animal so as the animal's not to run through it. It's not a bad shot if it's standing still. It's better if there's a little momentum. Um, but it's quite effective for uh, cattle going down in the branding corral. Um, if everybody's doing a sidearm swing, those cattle get to hugging the fence that way, or a, a conventional straight behind head shot. This shot here, you can get them off the fence, um, and that works real well. You can use that shot, the scoop loop, for facing up shots. It's very effective for that. I'm not, uh, we doctor lots of cattle here, and I'm not worried about roping something that faces up. I just about, in tune, like it to face up. Um, if they're in the roe deer, uh, that's kind of a, a nice uh, thing to have them do. Here, if you are facing up to them, you would pitch that loop, and it would go right around their head. This would be the scoop loop. Again, it would be the inverted swing. Pitch it, and it should go right out over their head like that. Again, you wouldn't take the slack until you rode like this. Take the slack. Okay? Okay.
this is a scoop loop. It's just a little bit different angle for you. It's in at my foot and out at my head. Roll your hand clockwise between his ears, like that. Ride one way or the other way, okay? That's how my hand would finish, like that, okay? This again is the scoop loop swing. This is a very difficult swing. This is a hip shot from right to left. If the cattle are going from right to left across the corral, it hang, the base of the loop goes on his top of his hind quarters. I look at the top of his hind quarters. When I pitch this shot, I lean a little bit forward when I release the loop. It's got to be the same angle from the top of his hind leg to the bottom of his front leg. Here, it's in at my foot, out at my head. When you pitch that, pitch it like that, he'll walk forward and you'll pick up two hind legs. You would basically have to come side pass over here a little bit to your right, wait for the header to take all, help you take all the slack out and go to the horn. Okay, we're going to get on to the Houlihan swing. I might want to mention about how you would get your rope gathered up when you were a horseback. You could either coil it up all the way, or what you can do is pull it back to you like that. Then you will, it will save you from coiling up. Then you could take it, hook it with your finger, and you will feed a bunch of slack in the loop like that. You see? Okay? Now, I want to kind of visit with you about these things here. Some of you may be getting a little bit of a kink in your rope. Do you see the top part of the, this in my left hand? This part lays on the top of your hand. The rope that's attached to the hondu lays on the bottom of my hand. If it's like this, crossed over, lots of times that can cause it to get kinked up. So you want to make sure you get that kind of straightened out and you hold your rope properly. Remember, at any time in your, when you're playing, if the rope gets all uh, tangled up or whatever, just drop it and start over. The hula hand swing, some people feel like a hula hand cannot be taken by continuously swinging it. It can be taken continuously swinging it, or it can be taken from a one swing position. Here, a hula hand, your thumb is down. A, hula, a proper hula hand, your thumb is down. The, you have lots of arm and lots of shoulder in it. My thumb is down now, now, now. Now, now. When you're learning this shot, it may start to kink up in you. Sometimes if you swing it a couple times, it will unkink. If the cattle are going faster, the loop stands more straight up and down. They run into it. If it's slower, it's flatter. I'll swing this shot. This is a head catch. The cattle would be going from your left to your right. My dummy is going slow. Pitch it on there. Take your slack straight back. And that would be the hula hand swing. The 
The other one I'd like you to kind of get is the one swing hula hand. What I like to do on this is rock the rope like this here. And when you pitch it, you start and you start from way back when you pitch that loop. From way back here, bring it straight. Okay, that would be the one swing hula hand. If you wanted more distance out of that, you would put a coil in the loop. We'll get into that a little bit later. This is a facing up hula hand shot. What you do is you push the loop right toward the critter's head and ride to the side of the animal again, either side, whatever you want it to do. Take your slack here like this. This is another hula hand shot. This shot is the cattle are going from your left to your right. They can either be standing still or moving. This shot can either be thrown with a hula hand swing and a hula hand delivery, or it can be thrown with a backhand swing and a hula hand delivery. I will get into that in a little bit. Again, this shot here, when the base of the loop touches the top of the hind quarters, you nip the spoke and that brings the tip back to you. And that's how it should go down. You would side pass your horse over to your left. The header would take it on. You would wait for both hind feet to step in it and go to the horn. Okay, now we've visited about, we have the four forward swings, the hula hand swing, now I'm going to visit about the backhand swing. Don't let it confuse you um, with the hula hand swing. I'm going to start it. Usually what you need to do is it starts out with one hula hand swing here and then you flatten the loop out here like this. See how my palm and thumb are up the whole way? That's a backhand swing. See that? My palm and thumb are up. It's my arm and shoulder moving. I'm going to switch it to a hula hand swing. You see? My thumb is down now. Okay? This is a backhand swing. What you want to remember in the backhand swing is that your palm is up and so is your thumb. Okay, this is just a little bit different angle for you to see how it looks here, like this. The loop is open. Okay, I'm going to show you a backhand head shot and uh, my friend Roger will uh, turn the cow so you can see it. And you'll be facing this way, that's it. This is a good shot in the branding corral. If somebody could bring you the cattle behind or the cattle were going around the corral like this, then it's a good shot on a colt. 
the reason I like this shot for Colts because I would position myself so when I when it came into view here over my right shoulder I would rope it take, go straight forward with my slack dally and go to the fire or wherever I was going to go there's no turning or backing up or anything involved in this shot this is why you need the backhand swing I turn a little bit in my saddle you see how the angle is the same as the cow's face you don't look over your left shoulder you look over your right shoulder when it comes into view you rope it it should figure eight on the off side so as not to run through the loop then you would take your slack straight forward like this you could be riding straight forward okay This is a backhand facing up shot. You'll push the loop straight toward the cattle. Push it right toward the cattle like that. Ride toward the cow. Take your slack now, or you would wait for the cow to turn. Take your slack, roll your hindquarters, and dally. Okay? This is a, uh, a hip shot, backhand swing. Again, this is good for colts, and it's also good if people have been conventionally kind of getting the cattle to hug the fence on the right side in the branding corral, because usually they want to come in on that side and rope from that side. Here, it's a backhand swing rolling my hand over top of his hind quarters. You can kind of rotate in your saddle a little bit. Notice the angle is the same from the top of the hind leg to the bottom of the front leg. I roll my hand over top of his hind quarters. The base of the loop will go over top, the tip will go underneath. When you get ready, pitch that loop, you will back your horse up or however Wait for him to step in that, and away you go. This is a reach and measure backhand shot. On this shot, I like to split the spoke of my, uh, my loop and hang on to it with my baby finger so as to have control of the loop when I do this. You're not in too close on this shot. You don't swing the rope, you rock it. When you, the tip can touch the cattle, you start the loop around. We'll start it here and we'll see what it does for you, for us. We start rocking the rope, getting in time with the cow. You'd reach here, now measure, and down it goes. You'd roll your horse's hindquarters around, lift up on the rope, wait for him to step through it, and go to the horn. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to get your horse ready to, uh, for if you were going to dally something. Just put this rope around the saddle horn like this, here. You have your halter on him, or 
your, you could have him turn loose, whatever, whatever you wanted there. Throw that over his head. You could get him to walk around you. Get him to walk around you, then draw on the saddle horn. Lots of times when they feel that pressure, they will fall apart. So just draw on it, your horse will soon turn and face you like that, and you can release it. Lots of times when they feel that pressure on the saddle horn, they will go to get bothered and scared. So you want to get them prepared and you can do that from the ground here. One other thing I might want to mention here is about getting your horse to back up if you were tied off to something, which we talk about in the other video. You would have a hold of your halter, shake this would keep it straight, shake the rope here so your horse will back up like this and then he can stop. You could also get him to go around you like this with it on the other side of his side of his neck like this and then draw on the rope and his front end will come over. You could flip that over his head and you could go the other way. Keep it up above their chest there. Keep it up above there. Let him go around there a little bit, a little bit of mo momentum. Draw on that and their front end will come around like that. So if you get something roped and the calf is pushing on the horse's neck, his front feet and body will move away from that pressure. That would be the side, if you were a right-handed roper, that the rope would be on if the calf was the windmill, if I was the calf. So these things are important. On this here, you wouldn't just dally solid and try to drag that. You could kind of hang on to that with your hand a little bit, make sure your horse is kind of used to that. Keep him looking at it with his right eye, see how the tire moved? And she kind of looked at it there. If she was to get scared or bother, just let go of the rope. Try not to dally right early on. You could just kind of see how she's a little worried about that. She's never seen a tire like that. And this is pretty good. Just keep riding around a little bit. If you need to be further away from it, you can be further away from it. Just kind of drag it, move it a little. You can kind of pull it. You don't have to pull it lots, just a little bit. So that she gets used to seeing that move a little bit. Once they kind of go forward and around and are kind of looking at it with their right eye, keep her looking at it with her right eye. Pretty quick, that won't bother her. You could face it, be careful here. If you drag this, drag this kind of close like that, she could suck, kind of suck back and suck out from underneath you. Be real careful, just keep her looking at it, easy. If she was to get afraid and scared, just stop pulling the rope. That's why you wouldn't dally right on early. Just easy. That'll kind of cause her to back up a little bit. You can then ride it around it forward. Don't try to get this all at once. Just try to get it so she'll look at it a little. You can kind of move it a little again. You can kind of move it a little again. That's pretty good. From here, you could dally, take one wrap. Now, I might mention dallying. I'll kind of go around here so you can get a good look at this. On this here, I like to use a slick horn, either mule hide, which is just actually uh, cow hide. They call it mule hide, but it's really not. Or latigo. I like a slippery horn especially for riding green horses to where you might have to let rope slip. When I dally, you don't dally with your hand round, you dally left, right, left, right, left, right. Things can go wrong once you get to the horn. You want to make sure you practice this and get very proficient at it. On this here, the distance between the coils and my hand determines when I go to the horn. 
If there was a whole bunch of slack like this, this is how you lose a thumb. This would pass behind the horn like that, and now you've got a hitch in it. You see that? You want to make sure this distance between here and here is about that distance there. Try not to look at the horn. That's a bad habit. A lot of times if you look at the horn, you'll look at the horn and then the cattle will do something and wham, you're in a wreck. Do not look at the horn. It never moves. It's in the same spot all the time. Remember this distance. If there was too much slack in it and you went to Dally, do you see how that passes over top of the horn? I'm not putting it there, but I'm in a wreck. Make sure that this distance between your hand, the coils and your hand, everything is in front of the horn. From this stage here, you could put a wrap on it like that and just drag it easy. If your horse was to get scared, undally. If he was to get worried and bothered and scared and things got out of place and out of shape, you could just drop the rope. I won't let go of it, I want to pick it back up. You just drop it all on the ground. If there was going to be a real big problem there and just start over. Whether you had cattle roped or whatever, that's a safety kind of a thing. That way you wouldn't be getting into so much trouble. Okay? Okay. From here again, you could dally, just put one wrap on, it's slippery. Just let it run around your horn like this. You see me running rope here? As it pulls from my right hand, it pulls the coil out of my left, like that. Just let it run around your horn. The tire's not very heavy, but a slick horn, it'll still slide there. It gets her used to pulling that gradually. I'll go back around here. We'll coil up. I might mention the coiling up part. You want to practice coiling up. Never ride your horse from the tire or the cattle or whatever faster than what you can coil up. Coil up, if you can only coil up this slow or this speed, go that speed. If I'll back up and kind of put some rope out there. If you can kind of coil up fast, you can ride up faster. If you, do, if you don't get proficient at this, your horse could step over that rope and then you're in a real wreck. You want to make sure you practice that. Again, slipping rope. This is like, uh, it's slippery. So if your horse gets stuck in the ground or his feet, you can let it slide a little bit and that'll help him to move his feet. It's not solid. If you had rubber, you couldn't let it slip and you could maybe hurt your horse or get him sticky on the rope or uh, hurt the cattle. You don't want to hurt the cattle and you don't want to hurt your horse. By having it slippery like that, it can slide and your horse has a chance to move and it's not so solid. Okay. Here on the dallion, this would be to practice dallying. This is an inner tube tied with a chunk of rope a bowline and the rope through the inner tube. It can't come off there. You want to make sure you have a pretty good inner tube. Practice dallying. Now I might want to mention that the distance between my hand and the coils is what dictates when I dally. If it's too much, this is what happens. See, I've got a hitch in there. That's how you lose your thumb. You want to make sure, I'll turn a little bit so you can see that. You want to make sure that the distance between when you dally your hand and the coils is about that much. Come to the horn, dally, maybe put one wrap. Do not look at the horn, it's in the same place all the time. Practice backing your horse up and running rope like this. Then you could put another one on. This gets it good about backing up and moving with pressure on the saddle horn. Again, it's that distance that you want to be careful about. You don't want to get it too far away or too long. You could do that either way. You could either get your horse, I'll kind of get sideways here, 
you could either turn your horse away from it and practice dallying and running rope. Just practice running the rope. And then you can undally. You could back your horse up. If you were riding a green colt to a calf, this is a good way to get it to get up short to the calf if you had a hold of the hind feet. You could back up to it that way. If it went to struggle, instead of you having to yard or pull it if it wasn't quite fast enough on the backing up, you would just back up to the calf. If it went to struggle, you would just dally and ride forward like this. That's a good way for young horses to get that separated. I'm going to visit a little bit about getting your horse to kind of track cattle. The way I kind of like to get it started is just kind of fall in behind the cattle and follow them. Don't pull on your horse. Just follow the cattle around. Follow their tail. If your horse was wanting to go too fast here and go on past the cattle, just if you had a snaffle bit, just wind them around in a circle like this and start back at the cattle. But at no time do you pull on him. But again, we're not going to get a whole bunch into that. This is kind of, uh, you need to prepare them early. And we, in the, some other tapes we have, we take care of these things. Here, I just get him kind of following the cattle around. Don't pull on him. Just let him follow the cattle around. If they change directions, just let them change directions. You keep over to the fence following their tail. That'll cause them to come across the center when they change eyes they can go back around to their right. This gets cattle good to drive. Fall all the way over to the fence. They should pick you up with their right eye, come across the center of the pen. They should change directions and go back around to their left, like that. Come around to their left. Pick you up with their left eye. Now they should come across the center of the pen and go back around to their right. Just keep following them, it's no big deal doesn't matter what happens. This kind of gets them good about following the cattle. I'm going to do a sidearm head catch on these here with the breakaway for you. It's about 45 degrees. As soon as the critter comes into view, you rope it. Right now, Take your slack, and then you would dally. This is a sidearm swing, 45 degrees. As soon as the animal comes into view, you rope it. Take your slack, and dally, and pop it off. We're going to set up a hula hand shot here. Frankly, this is where green ropers can lose their rope right now. Be dallied, take your slack there and be dallied there. We're going to do a scoop loop here from right to left. We got him now. You can just kind of ride and follow him a little bit. And you could practice your dallying. Pull on that and pop it off. This is an overhand shot with the tip over the left shoulder. As it comes into view, you rope it and take your slack. If you want, you can practice following the cow. And then you can practice dallying. Remembering When you dally, you shove your left hand forward away from the horn. This is a backhand swing. You look over your right shoulder. When it comes into view, you rope it, take your slack, and dally. Try to set up a one swing hula hand for you. We'll rock it when it comes into view. You 
You can just follow the cattle around there. Dally. The one good thing about the breakaway hondu is you got hours and hours of fun without anybody helping you if you didn't want it moving. This is a sidearm headshot facing up. Fits the loop. Let the animal turn. Take the slack. Dally. Pop it off. This would be a facing up scoop loop shot. Wait, ride to one side, take all your slack out of there, take it, and dally. This is a Houlihan swing, Houlihan delivery. And it's a facing up shot, push the loop right toward the cattle, take your slack, and dally and pop it off. This is a backhand swing, and you push the loop straight toward the cattle. Ride to one side, and take your slack. This is an overhand facing up shot, head shot, on this. The loop's flat in front of you here. Pitch it on there. Ride to one side. Dally. Pop it off. Okay, the next thing on the agenda, what I like to do, if you're by yourself and you have to head something, I tie a knot in the rope. Let me show you that so that the rope can't go tight. If you're by yourself and you're wanting to practice uh, heading critters and dallying with some pressure there on a moving animal, this is a real good way. The breakaway hondu, of course, you practice dallying, but you could hold onto it with your hand and pull it off. So this here is a little safer. You put a knot in it, it won't, you have to have a, 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 usually a metal hondu or a small rawhide hondo. We'll rope it here around the head. You see, make sure the knot's big enough. You can stay here, get your horse to tracking the cattle around the arena. The rope can help your horse follow the cattle. When you come across the center here, you could help your horse follow that by putting it underneath his neck. Just get your horse following the cattle. Get the cattle changing eyes. Just go across the center. Your horse can trot. Now you could dally. As soon as he faces you, the rope will come off. You could undally and get short again. But this is a good place to practice your dallying. Let it run. Put another wrap on and stop it. You could draw here. When it turns to face you, it'll pull off his head like that. You want to make sure that the knot is big enough so it can come off his head when you do rope it. That's real important that you do that. The Roger will get nice and short on that. We'll keep the cattle going. Same way, Roger will get real short on that. And we'll practice some heel shots. This is a sidearm hip shot, 45 degrees. Roll your hand over the top of the, 
top of his hind quarters like that he'll walk forward step in that loop like that the tail it hooks on the tail go to the horn and bust the breakaway away that would be how some of those hip shots look going down like that we're going to do here if it wants to stand still a flank shot a sidearm flank shot if there's enough room it's riding by it both hind feet in the rope like that dally and the rope pops off this is a straight in behind hip shot rolling your hand hard counterclockwise the base of the loop going over top of his hind quarters and the tip going underneath there's two hind feet this is a overhand shot with the tip over the left shoulder a little bit over to the calf's left it's what you would use in the arena stand up in your stirrups pitch the shot it's a trap shot Roger will lead it in there it'll walk in there this is an overhand shot with the tip over the left shoulder nipping the spoke it's a right to left shot you would throw it in there and nip the spoke and it will walk into the cattle, into the loop, like that. Reach and measure. Roll your horse's hind quarters around. Wait for him to step in the loop. And take all the slack out of the rope. This is a backhand shot over the hip. And it'll walk in it and you'll have two hind feet. This is a scoop loop hip shot. Calf will be going from right to left. And he will walk in the loop and you will side pass over this way like this. You will walk in the loop and you will take two hind feet. This is a left to right over the hip shot hula hand swing with a hula hand delivery nipping the spoke and you would roll your horses and walk forward and then roll your horses hind quarters around like this okay this about wraps the beginner to intermediate ranch roping tape up we have the intermediate to advanced tape we do a bunch more advanced things in there and it's outside uh, in a real situation um, I want to visit about the ropes a little. I said earlier, I use a 5 16 nylon rope with an, a, a rawhide hondo. I like that kind of a rope. Um, it's soft and it's uh, good for those hip shots. Roger has there a poly rope with a rawhide hondo. Um, this kind of a rope is basically made out of uh, kind of a plastic material. It's good if it's raining or the corral is wet. Um, you want to... Uh, be careful using that it can get pretty hot in your hand and it doesn't have much stretch um, but it's pretty good that poly rope either the white or gold it is about the closest thing to a, to a Rietta that I could uh, can find I want to thank everybody for uh, helping us out on this tape I want to thank my good friend Roger Thomason here uh, for giving us a hand I hope you get something out of these tapes that you can help you get on to some better uh, roping and some uh, working your cattle and kind of handling them with less stress and uh, not so much uh, confusion and chaos. Um, I want to thank the people that helped me learn some of these things. They know who they are. Um, so good luck and thank you very much for watching the tape. I really enjoyed making it.